Hello weirdos and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing the long awaited part two of my DC haul. I'm so excited to show these books to you. I've got a lot of books. Here we go. Ready? The first book I'm going to show you is House of Rain, Tracking a Vanished Civilization Across the American Southwest by Craig Child. This is an anthropology book about the Anazazi tribe and the investigation into their disappearance and why they disappeared but it also details their culture. I'm really excited to read this. I picked this up from a used bookstore. I think it was called Capitol Hill Books or something like that. This does have an audiobook, so I'm I'm really excited for this one. Oh, and it even has a bookmark in it. How nice. Next book I want to talk about is Evicted Poverty and Profit in the American City by Matthew Desmond. This talks about eight different families and their attempts to not get evicted in Milwaukee. Matthew Desmond is a sociologist and he wants to dissect and discuss problems in today's America that has to do with poverty and profit in housing and all of those issues. And I got this from the National Building Museum in DC and this does have an audiobook. This will be an interesting read. The next book I'm really excited to talk about is Devil in the White City, Murder, Magic, and the Madness at the Fair that Changed America by Eric Larson. I have been wanting to get my hands on this book for years and I just kept putting off when I saw it. It's a book that my library does have an audiobook for, so that's a huge bonus. I don't know why I haven't picked it up till now, but I got it and I'm super excited to read it. This book talks about the Chicago World's Fair that happened in the 1800s, while also paralleling with the story of H.H. Holmes, one of America's first serial killers. When I first heard the whole H.H. Holmes story, it was from a podcast called Stuff You Missed in History Class and they talked about this book. And then in my junior year high school English class, we were talking about the architecture of the Chicago World's Fair and one of my teachers brought it up. She was like, hey, yeah, Devil in the White City, like that's talking about what we're talking about right now and H.H. Home. And I was like, wait, I've heard about this book before and I just never got a chance to pick it up until now, almost nearly four years later. So. I'm excited. I also got this from a local Barnes & Noble. As previously mentioned, this does have an audiobook. The next book I got is An Anthropology of Everyday Life and Autobiography by Howard T. Hall. If you couldn't guess, this talks about his life. And I don't know that much else about this book. I'm guessing he's going to take an anthropological view of it. I'm not sure if he is an anthropologist, but I'm guessing he is given the title. I also got this at the Capitol Hill Bookstore. This does not have an audiobook. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. I think this is a movie. I heard about Henrietta Lacks for the first time in my second year at university in my biology class where we had a presentation that talked about cancer and her specific cancer cells and I got really interested in her story. It's a sad story because this woman dies and she dies in relative poverty but her cells, her cancer cells are being used to this day for cancer research and in my opinion they're using it unethically because they never got her permission and I'm not entirely sure if her family is getting compensated somewhat but you can still today buy her cancer cells. It's just a crazy story about science and ethics and I'm excited to read this. I've seen it. I got this from a Barnes and Noble in the area. This does have an audiobook. The next book I want to talk about is In My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg with Mary Harnett and Wendy W. Williams. I love RBG. She is one of my favorite humans. I 
If I could give my life force to someone, I would give it to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I'm not gonna lie, I read some of this book, I did not finish it because I ran out of time. I was reading this on audio and I really like the audiobook. I think it's really good because they use lots of the speeches of RBG in this book. In the audiobook, you get to hear the actual speeches of RBG, which is awesome. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just very happy that I have this book in my library. And I also got this from the Barnes Noble. This does have an audiobook and it's an audiobook that my library has, which we all know how much of a victory that is because of the... Mm. I hate my library's sad collection of audiobooks. This next book that I got is called Myths and Legends, Classical Greek, Celtic, Norse, Chinese, African, Native American, and more. The foreword is by William Doty and it's edited by Jake Jackson. And I saw this book and I was like, well, I'm taking an anthropology of religion class. So I think it would be cool to look at the actual mythology itself. I'm super excited about this. This doesn't have an audiobook. I think the cover is really nice. I got this from Barnes & Noble. The next book I got is Lucy's Bones, Sacred Stones, and Einstein's Brain, The Remarkable Stories Behind the Great Objects and Artifacts of History from Antiquity to the Modern Era by Harvey Ram Ranchelin. Best guess. Disclaimer. I can't decode things. This book, basically, as you can probably guess, talks about artifacts and it tells their story about how they were discovered, their significance, and kind of like their journey. This I also bought at the used bookstore called the Capitol Hill Store. I think all of the books I got that day were anthropology books. We cannot have a haul here on this channel without getting anthropology books. This doesn't have an audiobook. The next book that I want to show you really isn't a book, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. And that is the Souvenir Program from the Cirque du Soleil Volta. I went to go see Volta. It was my first Cirque du Soleil show. Usually when I go to see shows, I like to get their souvenir programs if they have them because they're beautiful and you can get a lot of insight into the show. You can just learn so much. It's stunning. Let's look at the pictures. It's beautiful. I wanted like real pictures of Volta so I can remember the magic and the beauty of the show because oh my god it was beautiful. I have never seen a show do tricks with a BMX bike for me to call it beautiful. It just blew my mind and if you go, go see a Cirque du Soleil show, it's worth it. It's fun, it's ethical, it's just human art and I love it. The next book I want to talk about is Educated, a memoir by Tara Watsover. And I have been recommended by so many people to read this book. I think the first one was like my aunt who basically talked about this one woman's quest to become educated, to get an education after her entire childhood being raised by religious fanatics. I think there are some survivalist weird brand of Mormonism. I hope this talks about the issues that come with having a family member who believes in something that more extreme and dealing with your own personal relationship with that loved one. As that can get really really complicated and there's lots of emotions that goes into that because you have to reconcile the love that you have with them, but also the damage and the hurt that they could have done. This damage may be intentional or unintentional. It can tear families apart. This does have an audiobook, because my library does have it. There's a very long waiting list. I'm on it. I've been on it for weeks. We'll see what happens, and we'll see when I get it. I also got this from a Barnes & Noble. Super excited. I also picked up The History of God, The 4,000 Year Quest of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam by Karen Armstrong. I got this because I find the intersection of these three major religions very, very interesting and very, very fascinating. And I love seeing the evolution and the how it all intersects and interweaves together. Because I think a lot of people today think it's kind of clear cut where that's not necessarily the case. And so I'm excited 
to read more about it, educate myself more on this issue so that when I have discussions with people, I can be like dropping facts that I've learned. This does not have an audiobook. I also got this from a Barnes & Noble in the area. The next book I want to show you is Brilliant Blunders from Darwin to Einstein, Colossal Mistakes by Great Scientists That Changed Our Understanding of Life in the Universe by Mario Livio. This talks about all of the scientific mistakes that lead to great, great scientific discoveries. I am really excited to read this book because I picked this book up at the Air and Space Museum. I'm just really excited to read more about science. I've been doing that a lot recently and I've enjoyed it. This does have an audiobook. The next book I got is called The Emperor of All Maladies, a biography of cancer by Sidoramuhanamani. We all know I can't pronounce things. I really like this author's other book, The Gene. I'm just really excited to read this because I really enjoyed The Gene and my my boss actually really liked this book too. It basically talks about what cancer is. If it's anything like his book, The Gene, I, I'm, I, I'm so excited. This does have an audiobook. I'm very excited. I really love how he writes science and how he talks about science and so I'm just, I've got words about how excited I am to read this book. I picked this up from Barnes & Noble. Um, I actually bought this at the same time that I bought the Dean. I don't know what else to say about how excited I am to read this book once I get the audiobook. This next book that I'm really excited to share with you is Live Long and Evolve. What Star Trek Can Teach Us About Evolution, Genetics, and Life on Other Worlds by Mohammed A. Noor. And I saw this. I read the title and I was like, I must have this. I love Star Trek. I really love what it has to say about um, anthropology. Star Trek has so much anthropology in it. It's crazy. It's wonderful. And I love when it talks about ethics and science. He'll like talk about specific episodes in it. I can't wait to, as I read this, watch the episode and then read the, the discussion about the episode. I'm, I'm just excited. I love Star Trek. I love having books about Star Trek. Yay. This does have an audiobook and I'm so excited. And I got this from Air and Space Museum that's along the National Mall. There. The next book I want to show you is called The Museum of Lost Art by Noah Channery. This book basically talks about all of the different artifacts that has some point been lost or stolen or completely destroyed. And um, what's really cool is that in the beginning, it's organized by how, how the pieces of art were lost. Some of the pieces of art do still exist today, some of them don't. I'm wondering if it talks about the Amber Room in here. I think that's really interesting. And they've got like pictures of some of the artwork that we still have, and it's really interesting. I picked this up from the Hirschhorn, Hirschhorn? We're gonna go with Hirschhorn, that's what I say. The Hirschhorn Museum of Modern Art in DC, and I think it's a fabulous museum. You should go and see it. It's beautiful, admission is free. They have right now an exhibit on Pickett's Charge. Um, it's a titled Pickett's Charge, and it's just this beautiful, like, giant piece of art. And it also has a really, really good exhibit right now called The Evidence Room, which is a exhibit that talks about the trial that basically a historian was like, oh, I don't think the Holocaust is real. And then they had to go and reprove the Holocaust exists. The Evidence Room is an artistic representation of the evidence that they used in that trial. I think this will be um, an interesting four-way foray an interesting adventure into lost art that may or may not exist anymore. No audiobook. Sad. The next book I got, oh, the Smithsonian Civil War Inside the National Collection. This talks about all the artifacts in the Civil War and then talk about the Civil War. And if you don't know, Civil War is one of my favorite times in history to learn about and to research. I've been researching it for the longest and the reason there's not a lot of other Civil War books in these halls is because I already have so many and I don't want to overlap but so when I saw this I was like ah 
this is definitely a book I do not own and it's it's different from a lot of the other ones. This kept this in its plastic wrap too because I want to keep it protected until I'm really ready to open it up and look at it. And some of these artifacts will not continue to exist so having this just capsule of Civil War artifacts is I'm very excited. I got this from the National Portrait Gallery. This next book is The Gene, An Intimate History by Sidaram Mukherjee. And I love this book. I love this book so much. I talk about it in my wrap up for July. This is my favorite book I read in July. <laughs> I have Emperor of Maladies. It basically talks about genetics and how our understanding of genetics has evolved and where genetics can go in the future. And I felt so many emotions while reading this from good to bad, I might have to pick up the third book he's written because I think he's written three books. It was so good. I listened to the audiobook. My library has the audiobook, which surprise, surprise, we all are surprised by this. I also got this at a Barnes Noble and I, I'm just so happy I picked this up and I read it when I did. The next book I got is the Vacation Guide to the Solar System by Julia Noski and Jana Gravich. I picked this book up and I thought it was so funny. The premise was so funny because it's basically structured like any other travel guide. It talks about like their like sections are places to stay, what to pack, what to eat. I just thought this was a really really cool idea to make it a fun and engaging way to learn about science and space. In, in seventh grade, I had to do a project where we had to do something similar but with a planet and we were assigned Saturn's moon Titan and I remember putting together just like, oh, you can go out on spacewalks and see this blah 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 and I had so much fun doing that. I thought it would be fun to see. And I just thought this was completely humorous and funny and I'm I'm excited to read this. I also got this at the Air and Space Museum in DC. This also has an audiobook, so I'm just I'm just gonna have a real fun time reading this. The next book I want to talk about is Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. I really like this book. Um I have read this. I read this in July and I really liked it. I liked the beginning more than I liked the ending, but I think that's just a personal preference of mine. This basically talks about humankind, but it doesn't focus on specific events. It focuses more on the underlying issues between everything, and it was really, really interesting to see in the beginning how things came to be the way they were, how social dynamics. It was really cool to see how he talked about how writing People learned how to write because they couldn't store the amount of information they needed in their heads. I think that anyone should read it. Yeah, I liked it. It does have an audiobook, and I picked this up from Barnes & Noble. Next book I have to show you is called Chasing the Sun, The Epic History of the Star That Gives Us Life by Richard Cohen. I picked this up from the Air and Space Museum in the National Mall in DC, and I thought it was really interesting. This book talks about the sun and its interpretations in different cultures and in language and in economics. I'm really excited for what this talks about because I think it'll be a really interesting look at science and anthropology regarding the sun and how it comes up and manifests itself in different ways in different cultures. This isn't an anthropology specific book, but I think it'll have lots of anthropology vibes in it. Also, the author researched this for seven years. I love well-researched books. The next book I want to talk about is Professor Stewart's Casebook of Mathematical Mysteries by Ian Stewart. Ian Stewart is a mathematician and basically on every page there's a different mathematical puzzle. And I saw this and I was like, this looks really interesting. It's going to be so interesting to learn about different mathematical quandaries. I'm really interested in this. I thought it would be just sort of like a fun book to pick up and just read and have fun with. I hope it's written in a very digestible way. This doesn't have an audiobook and I also picked this up from the Air and Space Museum in on the National Mall. I don't have much else to say about this other than I'm excited to read it. The next book I have to show you is The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. 
This is adapted and illustrated by Christina German. This is a graphic novel version of The Jungle, and The Jungle is one of my favorite books. I have read this. I read this in a day. It's a graphic novel. I did like it. I had some issues. I think it, it misses a little bit of the mark of what the original Jungle was, but I had a lot of fun just seeing the jungle come to life. And if you don't know, the jungle follows a family from Lithuania and their struggles to live the American dream in early America. And it's just a soul crushing tale. And it's, I think, also a really important tale. I think I will try and get my hands on other things that she adapted because I do wish it was longer. I don't have much else to say. I don't think there's an audiobook. I also got this from the National Building Museum in DC. And finally, the last book I got was Apollo's Angels, a history ballet by Jennifer Holmans. And this I actually picked up today, the day of the filming, and got off of work a little bit early. So I went to the local library. They have a wall that's a library book sale. I was looking through and I saw this and I was like, I like dance. Dance means a lot to my family and is very important. I thought I'd pick this up and it was only a dollar and I was really surprised that they had this. And yeah, I don't know that much about it. I think the cover is beautiful. It does have an audiobook. It's about ballet, so maybe I will lend this to my brother. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. Wow, you guys did it again. You got through another ridiculously long book haul. I'm so glad you sat there. I'm so glad that you listened to what I have to say. I'm really excited about reading these books. Is there any one that looks really interesting to you? Do you want me to read anything first? Like, comment, subscribe. It's raining outside. I think I'm going to be doing one more book haul in the future and then I have no plans to do any other big book hauls like this. I kind of went book crazy in DC. As you can tell, I have no idea how many books I got totally over the course of my entire summer here. Thanks so much. Thanks for sitting around and listening to me being ridiculous and rambling. I just want to take a nap. What's nap time? Let's have a nap time.